Thank you very much. I don't Sorry. see you all, but um, I sense the spirit, you know, we've been very excited. Um, I had a dream and then I woke up and then this is the uh, reality of uh, a small dream, but it's good to have all of us here. Um, very excited. Uh, this afternoon, I'm Charles Lee, as you can see, and I uh, guess my name is there. Uh, the program convener and senior lecturer with University of Newcastle. Uh, we have uh, in Australia as well as have a significant Singapore office. I'm based in Singapore and you see Tim Roberts uh, waving there. He's so excited. So great. Yeah. So uh, I wish I could be jumping up and down on the floor. Uh, however, we are so privileged to have us in University of Newcastle uh, with uh, a very significant university, Universitas Lambong Mangkurat, uh, ULM, uh, based in Kalimantan. Uh, Arif will show up uh, uh, later, I think, uh, to co-host this uh, research seminar on ecological restoration of impacted ecosystems, as you can see in the title, encouraging uh, results from the field. So we have real field results to uh, show you. Uh, and I'm um, um, thankful for the five speakers that we collaborate with. They're from Indonesia, Australia, and Singapore. Um, they have had... Uh, coming here to share their decades of passion and experiences, you know, in their restoration of ecosystems. So um, 15 minutes presentation, but, you know, full packed with uh, good stuff. Now, um, as I was looking at the participants, attendees, wow, we are close to 200. Not all will be here, but um, thank you very much for spending your afternoon with us. Even those who are students or those who appear to have nothing to do, but you know, you could be doing something else, but you're here to um, uh, experience this, uh, you know, particular topic. And it is a timely uh, session because, um, as you know, the United Nations Environmental Program, UNEP, has announced just uh, very recently on the launch of the Decade on Ecosystem Restoration, and that is 2021, a few days away to 2030. So I'm not saying we are way ahead, but we are so uh, happy to launch this uh, special research seminar. It is really to prevent, halt and reverse the degradation of ecosystems worldwide. So we are doing our small part here in ASEAN and uh, of course Australia to uh, you know, bring this, um, this to the table and it needs the UN Sustainability Development Goals. There are 17 in there, and I believe it meets all 17. But specifically, this ecological restoration, I believe, meets um, six SDGs, which Tim will expound on, six Sustainable Development Goals. And we couch it as uh, very important, uh, close to heart to a lot of us, poverty, eradication, SDG 1, no poverty, food security, SDG 2, zero hunger, climate change, well, all of you know what's climate change, SDG 13, that's climate action, water security, SDG 6, clean water and sanitation, and last but not least, is very close to all of our hearts, biodiversity conservation, that's SDG 14 and 15, life below water and life on land. So we are in the cusp of a, a planet kind of a catastrophic um, problems, but yet we have a lot of hope. And uh, we really hope that this webinar, it's only uh, two hours, would inspire you to, to take up these challenges, to, uh, you know, to move up and do something, even if it's a small uh, you know, effort. We are looking at millennials and students out here and uh, looking at the next Greta Thunberg that you will arise and uh, take the challenge. Thank you very much. So with that, um, I'd like to introduce a Tim Roberts uh, for the introduction. So I'm going to just uh, say a few words on Tim. He does not really need uh, too much of an introduction, but uh, I will, where is my thing? Here? Yeah, he's the Emeritus Professor of Tim Roberts. Director used to be uh, Tom Farrell Institute for the Environment at University of Newcastle for eight years. 
published well, uh, you know, a few hundred uh, papers. And his research interest, he tells me, is in environmental sustainability systems thinking with an emphasis on community engagement in developing regional solutions for sustainable future. He collaborates, of course, extensively worldwide, but he's humble to say he collaborates with us here in Singapore, ULM, and um, our co-host, and Tadulako University in Palu, Central Sulawesi. I am delighted to be here, and I'm delighted to be able to give along with Charles, a welcome to you all for spending two hours with us because you are about to hear some brilliant uh, work done by a, a lot of scientists who are really trying to make a change along with uh, practitioners in the field. And I am so pleased to see my good friend Didik there. So, in terms of uh, where we are, we are in the start of the next decade of ecosystem restoration. And at the end of the day, what is, is the goal is to prevent and to halt and reverse the degradation of ecosystems worldwide. Already, uh, there have been some very positive uh, developments. And 115 countries have committed to restoring up to 1 billion hectares of land, that's roughly the size of China, uh, that has been lost to development. So th there are three major international conventions already committed to uh, trying to make a difference. Half of that land is going to be in sub-Saharan Africa, the remainder in Asia and Latin America. And restoring forests and farmland accounts for three quarters of the area pledged. So we're off to a good start and we haven't even reached the starting gate. As Charles said, we have another month to go before we reach the starting gate. What I want to do, do in the introduction was just to take you back 50 years. 50 years ago, Barry Commoner gave us the laws of ecology, and I think we all need to remember them. Let's have a look at what's in red. Everything is connected to everything else. Everything must go somewhere. There's no waste, there's no way. Everything must go somewhere. And at the end of the day, no matter what humans do in terms of technology to improve on nature, the natural system will prevail. Nature knows best. So uh, at the end of the day, nature knows best. And there's no such thing as a free lunch. We will exploit nature, but there is a cost to exploit, exploiting nature. There is no such thing as a free lunch. We know that the sixth mass extinction is underway. We know that uh, there is more than a million plants and animal species now threatened with extinction. And we know the cause of that. The cause of that is human activity. So it's, it's over exploitation, it's climate change, it's pollution, and it's the invasion by alien species. So and, uh, indigenous in, species are under threat, more than a million of them. We know also that we are under threat from a zoonosis, we're under threat from the uh, coronavirus, uh, and we also know that Investing in activities that protect and restore biodiversity will not only provide immediate jobs, but it will also reduce the risk of future crises and it will improve the resilience and long-term viability of businesses and the economy. I want to just uh, move to Africa for a minute. In Africa, we have 60 million people 
who may be forced to migrate during the next three decades because the desert is growing. To try and hold back this move of the desert, desertification, African nations have come together to plant a great green wall. So from one side of Africa to the other, across 8,000 kilometers from east to west and 15 kilometers wide will be a new wall of trees. It will be the longest living organism on the planet. This started about a decade ago and it's roughly 15% underway. And to me, it is so, so exciting because this initiative has already brought life back to the degraded landscapes that have been planted with trees. It has provided food because food trees are being planted. It's provided job security and it's provided a way of stopping the migration of people away from the areas because suddenly there is food, there is good weather, there is rainfall where this, uh, where these trees are planted. And I think it's a way forward for all of us. It's a wonderful example. As you know from uh, Charles, uh, I have very strong and wonderful connections into Kalimantan. My good friend Arif Budiman and Amalia and Didik uh, are dear to my heart. And, and so we look also at uh, Kalimantan and Indonesia a lot. And we will hear later on of the peatlands, the changes that have been made to them, and now the changes that are revitalizing them. And with that, I just want to say uh, that there, that handsome man next to the man in the green shirt uh, is a man who has really assisted me over the last four years to develop uh, research pro programs and student exchange programs in uh, Indonesia, in Kalimantan, and it has been a revelation. It has led me to research programs with Charles and, uh, and Amalia, and with that I'll say I wish everybody an exciting time in the next two hours. Thank you very much.